Okay, once again, greetings in the precious name of Jesus. Welcome uh, again, and um, we just began our online uh, Passover conference. For those of you that are coming in now, we were dealing with uh, the first session. In the first session, we were speaking about the issues with regard to the beginning of all of these things. It all begins in the blood. It all begins in the blood. Never preach about the benefits of Jesus without preaching about him as the king first. He, he has to become the king. He has to become the Lord. He has to become the savior of them that are coming to God through him. So once you present the kingdom without him as the king of that kingdom, you will end up measuring and, and, and emphasizing more of benefits and more of what God can do. But to the people who don't have a relationship with that God. So the, the beginning of it all is it all begins at the blood. Now once you start to present their relationship, then you got it right. You got it right. So that you you, you don't we don't become a people that are flowing and moving with him, but then we don't know him. We only know his hand, we only know his benefits, we only know what he can do for us, but we, we have never known him as the as, as the Lord. We have never experienced him as the saving Lord. So it is important, brothers and sisters, that the beginning of it all, we all began these dimensions at 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 at, at a place called salvation. We, we, we start sorry, we start this important move, this important relationship at the start as the starting place. You cannot run the race. I mean most of you know I'm a runner. Anybody who jumps into the race without starting the race at the starting point is deemed illegal and disqualified. Now you don't want to be disqualified, you know, in 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 in, in what God is doing because you you did not start right. The beginning of it all has to be at the starting point and the starting point is salvation the starting point is not the prophetic the starting point is not prophecies the starting point is not healing the starting point is not knowledge the starting point is not information the starting point is not encouragement the starting point is not exhortation the starting point is not miracles the starting point is not marriage the starting point is not weddings the starting point is salvation so we began initially at the salvation and once we understand dynamics of salvation uh, we, we will get it right. I'm actually drafting a manual to revisit this important doctrine, the doctrine of salvation, to, to, to revisit this teaching and I'm listing down things that, you know, entails salvation. You know, you know the, those, the kind of things that I was taught when I began my work with God um, and, and, and the kind of things that the Bible teaches that governs and relates with, you know, issues of salvation. So I'm, I'm drafting that manual, you know, as time goes on, I'll, I'll announce its availability bulletin you know will forward it to you um so that you know we don't lose this basic we don't lose this essential component of our walk with god the bible says that if the foundations are broken what can the righteous do the, the beginning of the foundation is very important there are people that i've met who are who are moving in anointing there are people that i've met who are moving in power who are moving in you know great and powerful dimensions in god but when you look underneath the foundations you, you discover that they are they are seriously broken foundations and a lot of them you know most of them i'm not saying everybody most of them have never encountered jesus in the beginning they, they they've encountered bishops they've encountered you know you know anointing and so on but never really met jesus so it's important that we begin passover at salvation now number two i will be teaching you now about the ark of noah we're going to glean truth and dynamics that that affect us from the ark of noah we're looking at the book of genesis chapter 6 we are studying the ark of noah we are studying the ark of noah and glean things from the ark of noah what are the things that you can glean from the ark of noah that actually are very very important and that are actually very essential in terms of where you are right now in god in terms of where you are you know you know where you're going with god so what one of the things that you need to understand about the ark of noah and the season of the floods that noah was in on our day one of, uh, of of our Passover conference. One of the things that you need to understand about the Ark of Noah is that the Ark of Noah was built at a time where there was there was there was these 
serious high levels of wickedness on earth. There were serious levels of scary wickedness on earth to a point where God even said, why did I create a person? Why did I create men? Why have I created him? You know, and, 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 and there was a problem. And one of the problems we read about this, it was, we, we, we read this from Genesis chapter 6 verse 4 where the Bible says that there were giants on earth in those days and also afterward when the sons of God lived with the daughters of men and they bore children to them. These were mighty men who were of old men of renown. In other words, in the days of Noah, when Noah was building the ark, when the, 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 the ministry of Noah began, there were giants on earth. There were giants on earth. These were mighty guys. These were massive guys. And literally, these are not spiritual beings. These are fleshy beings that you are able to come into contact with and see. Now, these guys, they were born out of an encounter between what? The, the sons of men, the daughters of men, and the sons of God. That encounter brought out these giants. Now, these giants, according to what scripture teaches us, is that these giants were illegal on earth. I want you to get that. These giants were illegal on earth. And, 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 and the days of Noah are not so different from our days. The days of Noah are not so far from our days. Because when you look at the days of Noah and the things unfolding in our day and age, you will discover that the days of Noah are not different from our days. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. This is one of the things that Jesus said. Now, I want you to get this. Now, in our day, there are giants that 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 are leading you know churches that are leading ministries that are leading corporations that are leading mighty and massive things but in order to understand their legality in order to understand you know who they are you've got to look at their foundation in order to understand something don't look at it at the giant stage look at where it has all started in order to understand the validity the legality and the correctness of something look at where it all began look at the beginning of it the beginning of it you'll discover that it, it started out of a wrong encounter and these wrong encounters bathed giants now let's leave it there let's leave it there now giants in the days of noah were doing you know you know you know wicked things and and led you know the earth into a very you know you know very bad state. So God raised a man by the name of Noah. So when God raised man by the name of Noah, the Bible says that Noah dis found grace before the eyes of the Lord, before the eyes of the Lord. In order to find grace, one has to know where the eyes of God are. Where the eyes of God are, that's where grace is. That is where grace is. That's for another day. Now, the Bible says that now the Lord began to to, to, to start with Noah, who was leading a family, you know, with three sons, his own wife, and the three daughters-in-law, and they were a family of eight. Watch that. They were a family of eight. And, and, and God gave the father, you know, a prophetic message to declare in his time and age about the building of an ark. Now, this is, this is where I'm going to spend my time tonight. This is what God says. Now, God said to Noah in verse 13, Genesis 6 verse 13. God said to Noah, I intend to make the end of all flesh. For through men, the land is filled with violence. And behold, I will destroy them and the land. Make yourself an ark of gaffer or cypress wood. Make in it rooms. Stalls, pens, coops, nests, cages, and compartments, and cover it inside and out with pitch. This is what I want you to get. Genesis 6:15. And this is the way you are to make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, its breadth shall be 50 cubits, and the height shall be 30 cubits. So God gave Noah, what's that? God gave Noah specific measurements of how this ark is to be built. God revealed what needs to be built. Watch this. God revealed to Noah what needs to be built. What was needed to be built was the ark. Now, the revelation of what was to be built is, 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 is the function of the prophetic anointing. Because the prophetic anointing reveals the what. Get that, get that, get that. The prophetic anointing reveals the what part of what God is doing. There is the what part. And the how part, what that, the how part is revealed or executed by the apostolic. Watch this. 
Watch this, watch this. This is very, very important for you to understand. So within Noah, there are two dimensions in Noah and his sons. There are two dimensions in Noah and his sons. There is the what part. God revealed the what. What? The ark. How was the, now the aspects of engineering? It was the aspects of engineering. In other words, the apostolic grace is an engineering grace that execute and implement what was, what was revealed by the prophetic. So the prophetic reveals the apostolic execute. Get that, get that, get that, get that. Very, very, very important principle that I want to establish this morning, especially from the Old Testament perspective. The Bible says that Noah, watch that, Noah received what was to be built. But God also now had the grace logged in the same man, which was how to build the ark. So the prophetic reveals the what. The apostolic brings in the how. Now, when we become a church that rejects true apostles, that rejects the apostolic ministry, we will be running only with the what and never have things that are to be implemented as heaven has revealed. I want to say that again. I want to say that again. I want to say that again. If we now become a church that majors only in the prophetic and never have the how. In other words, in every church, you might not necessarily be led by an apostle. You might not necessarily be led by an apostle. But there must be an apostolic element in that church. There must be room in the church that you are part of that brings in the apostolic grace. Now, the apostolic grace will bring in an implementation and execution. Now, when God reveals what needs to be done, there must be grace that will go out and implement. And the implementation and the engineering thereof, the engineering of the ark requires the apostolic anointing, the revelation of what needs to be done, the specific measurement that needs to be in terms of this ark is revealed through the prophetic. Prophets bring in revelation. Apostles bring in in wisdom. Prophets reveals, apostles implement. It's very important that these graces are married, that we don't reject them. Now, I'm not talking about false prophets who just in, excite and, you know, entertain people. Now, I'm telling you what is in your fridge. Now, if I tell you what is in your fridge, now, that does not help you. That does not bring any solution. That does not help anybody. Because when God speaks to you, he does not need to convince you that he's God. Already God by himself is God. And if you know him within Within you, within you, the dimensions of Christ within you respond to Christ as he speaks. That's for another day. Now, hear me well on this one. So, Noah received the what? What needed to be built was the ark. What needed to be put together was the ark. And there were measurements. I want you to get this. The prophetic will help you to be specific in what you need to do. Now, when you catch the prophetic anointing and flow in it, you don't necessarily have to be a prophesier. Now, when you limit the prophetic into prophesying only, you have already missed it. You have already missed it. The prophetic is not necessarily just to excite people and generate prophecies and so on. This is the building grace. This is the building grace. This is the grace to build lives. This is the grace to build the church. This is the grace to build God's people. Now, when we receive the prophetic grace, the prophetic grace assists us in terms of getting the specifics of what needs to be done on earth, in terms of what God wants you to, to, to do on earth. In other words, every knower of our time has to carry the aspects of the prophetic anointing within him. Because if you are going to execute the mandate and the plans of God on earth in the absence of the prophetic, you will not do it accurately. So what we see in Noah, watch this. What we see in Noah, Noah carried, he carried the, he carried the, the, the what? He carried the grace that enables him to pick. They carried the grace that enables him to pick, you know, accurate, 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 accurate measurements from God. The specific things that we need to do for God on earth must be revealed through the prophetic grace. The specific things that we need to do for him in our personal space, it takes the prophetic faculties, it takes the ear that hears, it takes the ear that hears, and the heart that can receive what God lays in it in order to be accurate, in order to be exact. When God says to Noah, the ark must be 300 cubits, it was not a 
upon Noah to do as he wished. It was not upon Noah to put the measurements as he desired. He has to be exact. He has to be exact in terms of the measurements that God has given him. Now that's another teaching on his own. Becoming so exact in what God has laid in your heart. When God lays things in your heart for you to do for him, you've got to ex you've got to execute it through the apostolic anointing. So the apostolic anointing does not necessarily mean you are an apostle. Does not necessarily make you an apostle. You can still be who you are and still move in the apostolic spirit. Now, the apostolic spirit is the spirit of execution. Watch this. The apostolic spirit is the spirit of execution. It's the spirit that enables us to execute and implement the grace of God on earth. And there's also an aspect there that we need to touch concerning the three sons of Noah. There were three sons of Noah and their wives and, 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 and the mother who is the wife of Noah and also you know the, 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 the three daughters-in-law. We, we will talk about that. Actually, let me deal with that just a little bit. Now, you must remember that you must remember, you must remember, if you are not Noah, watch this, if you are not Noah, you've got to be at least the son of Noah or connected to Noah somehow. If you are not the one carrying the heartbeat of God for the season, connect with people who are carrying the heartbeat of God for the season. Hear me well, hear me well on this one. You know, if you are not Noah, be the son of Noah. If you are not Rahab, be a relative of Rahab so that when the city of Jericho comes down and collapses, you are saved because you are under the roof of Rahab. Watch this. Let me expand this even further. Do you remember the day that Jesus met Peter, Simon Peter and his fishing partners for the very first time? These guys were fishing and they fished the whole night and caught nothing. Now they said, Master, we have toiled the whole night and we caught nothing. And Jesus said that, you know, let me have your boat. I want to preach just, you know, just to preach to the people. And after preaching to the people, Jesus chose the boat of Peter. After preaching using the boat of Peter, Peter was told, cast your net way deep. And then they brought in, you know, large, a great number of fish and they caught a great number of fish. Now, here's the revelation. Now, 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 when God chooses the boat of somebody else, when Jesus chooses the boat of Peter, don't fight Peter. Don't be jealousy of Peter. Don't mock Peter. Don't write bad stuff about Peter. The best and the least you can do is to connect with Peter because when he catches now a great number of fish, it will also flow coming to your boat. If you are not a carp in this season, if you are not a Noah in this season, at least be the son of Noah. If you are not Peter, be a partner of Peter. If you are not Rab, at least relate with Rab in some in some in some portfolio or otherwise, so that when the Rab began to be saved, you are at least under that roof of Rahab. If you are not Lot in Sodom, relate with Lot. Because there were two guys in the city of Sodom who could have not died if they have related well with Lot and took serious what Lot said. Now, I want to say this, brothers and sisters. The three sons of Noah teaches us a lesson that if you are not Noah, be the son of Noah. Now, part of what needed to be done within, within, within the house of Noah was that these sons and the family has to help Help Noah to execute what God has laid in your heart. When God reveals things in the heart of your leader, join in the leader, be behind the leader, and help the leader to execute what God has put in the house in the heart of the leader. The Bible says that when we slept in the book of Acts chapter 16, now I'm in the book of Acts chapter 16. When Paul and them slept during the night, Paul had a dream, and the men of Macedonia was saying to Paul, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And the Bible said that when we woke up in the morning, we made a conclusion that God has actually called all of us to go into Macedonia and minister. The vision was revealed to Paul, but the execution was a team of people. God will reveal stuff to the leader. God will reveal measurements to Noah, but the execution, the apostolic grace will be also carried by the sons that will also assist Noah to build the ark. No one ever built that ark alone. He did did not build it alone. He built it with his family. He built it with his family. Don't allow your leader to execute the plans and the purposes of God alone. Join in to your leader. Join hands. Team with your leader and execute the plan that has been revealed in the heart of the leader. Sometimes God reveals things to leaders and we leave it to the leaders. They will see it themselves. We were not there when God reveals it to them. And also leaders, sometimes we do have a problem where in God laid things in our hearts and we, we want to do it alone. 
alone. There is no man who can execute the plan and the purposes of God alone. You will need a team of people. You will need people who will join you in building that ark. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. We are beginning. Welcome to day one of our online Passover conference. The building and the execution. The revelation was brought by the prophetic. The implementation was implemented by the apostolic. And in the dynamics of implementation, we see the involvement of sons. We see the involvement of a team. We see the involvement of a family. No man can execute the plan of God alone. No man can execute the plans and the purposes of God alone. In the day of Pentecost, when Peter stood up to minister to when 3,000 people were born again, it all began with 3,000 people being born again. But the Bible says that Peter stood up with the 12. Every man standing up in this season, there must be the 12 that are standing with you. There must be a team of people that join you, you know, and that are in alliance with you and that are relating with you in executing the plan and the purposes of God. No man can do what God wants them to do alone on earth. So the execution is in the team. The revelation could be just Noah only because God spoke to Noah only but the execution must not be left alone to know. Join hands with your leader. Join hands with your pastor. Join hands with your, you know, you know, you, with your leaders in this nation. The vision might be revealed to the president, but it's gonna need the whole nation to join in and come in behind that leader, and we execute the plans and the purposes of God. So it is important. The how part is the implementation. When God reveals the what, there must be the how. When God reveals the what, there must be the how. The what is the revelation. The what part of it is revelation. The how part will need wisdom. Will need wisdom. Will need wisdom. Will need wisdom. So, the apostolic spirit brings in elements of wisdom to execute and implement the plans and the purposes of God on planet Earth. I hope you have caught that dimension very well. Work well with your pastors. In fact, I'm, I'm tempted to come in tomorrow morning and teach about how to work and walk with the man of God. How to walk and why or how to work and walk with the man of God. Because a lot of us, we want to walk with the man of God and women of God like we are walking with politicians. And it's different. It's a different dynamic altogether. So let's let's look at let's look at this family, how this family related, and how they put together the ark. The ark was put together by a team, and the implementing of the, the, the things that God laid in Noah required the apostolic grace. It is the apostolic anointing that will execute the plans of God in our lifetime. Oh, I hope you catch that. 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 Now, the last part that I want to work on and then we close. Day one of seven, welcome to the online Passover conference. It all begins in the blood. It all begins in the blood. And after the blood, then we can get inside. Now, one, 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 one of the things that I want to highlight here is, is the issue of giants. Remember, the giants were tall people. These were tall men. These were heavyweights. These were men of renown. Now, when listen to this. When God, get the revelation, when God gave Noah the measurements of the ark, God knew who will be in and who will be out. I want you to get that. I want you to get that. When God gave Noah the measurement of the ark, how the ark should look like, the measurement of the ark, God has already measured the giants. He knew their size. In order to cut them off from what he is doing now, he gives a specific measurement. This measurement will cut off unwanted people. Do you know, watch this, do you know that there are unwanted people in your space that God does not want them in? in your space and into what he is doing in your personal space and the best way to cut them is to give you an accurate and clear specific measurements of how you need to do and execute things in your life in that way it will cut off wrong people you can be Noah and travel with giants you can be Noah and move on with these giants if you build the ark anyhow you feel you don't build the ark in any way you feel like building build it according to the measurements of God there is safety in accuracy there is safety in doing things exactly 
exactly how God instructed you to do them. There is safety. There is safety. I want to say this again. If you build the ark anyhow, these giants will also fit in because you built it anyhow you feel. Or you, 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 will, you will be unable to cut off unwanted people. There are unwanted beings in the plans and the purposes of God whom God does not want in the purposes of God with regard to an individual. They belong elsewhere. Not every ark is meant for everybody. No, the ark was not meant for everybody. Now, the measurement will cut off wrong people. Accuracy will cut off wrong people. Executing the plan of God exactly the way God wanted it to be executed. It will make sure that you are not unequally yoked with unbelievers. There are things that we believe and it brings in everybody, even unwanted giants that are already judged by God and they find it easy to enter into the ark. Now build the ark according to the measurement. The measurement will cut off unwanted people. Let me say this my leaders. Let me say this my apostles. Let me say this my prophets. Let me say this my pastors. There are people that you will and you will you will not be able to handle. There are people who carry things in them that you will not be able to handle because you are not anointed to handle every issue and every issue and every issue. No, you are not anointed for that. There is safety. Listen, listen to me. There is safety in knowing exactly what God wants you to do. You are not anointed for everybody. Some people carry things that you are unable to handle. And don't act like a hero and don't act like a, you know, like a hero who wants to minister and, you know, and, 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 and bring in everybody. Some people carry things you will not be able to handle. So when God gives you a specific vision, don't copy what others are doing. When God gives you a specific vision, don't copy what every church is doing. As a church, I want to encourage you. As a local church, when God put a vision in your heart as a local church, don't copy what the churches around you are doing because, you know, you might bring in giants that you will not be able to carry and you will not be able to handle. There are people that God did not want in that act. So he gave the measurement that will cut them off. There are people that God does not want you in your personal space because you don't have the grace and the ability to handle them. So when God becomes very clear to you in terms of what you need to do, don't copy what I'm doing because I'm, I might carry the aspect of grace you don't have. Don't copy what your friends are doing. Don't copy what your fellow leaders are doing. Don't copy what is available on Facebook. Don't copy what every church is doing. Be specific. God was very specific to know. I want you to build the ark with these measurements. There is safety in accuracy. There is safety in implementing the will of God to the exact demands of God. When you implement the plans and the purposes of God exactly how God wanted them to be executed. Unwanted beings will not enter into your space. Now, when you find unwanted beings already invading your space, ask yourself, did I execute this thing accurately or not? When you find yourself unequally yoked with people you were not supposed to be yoked with, ask yourself, did I implement exactly how God wanted me to implement? Read Genesis 6, uh, 6.15. Genesis 6.15 gives clear measurements gives him 300 cubits, the ark shall be 300 cubits, its breadth shall be 50, its height must be 30 cubits. These measurements, God knew that I want to cut off wrong people. I want to cut off giants. Now, when you carry the how, the part to implement the plans and the purposes of God, every apostolic leader must move in accuracy. Don't do what everybody is doing. Do what God has laid in your heart and leave the rest to others. If God has never laid a plan in your heart, don't do it. If God never laid a purpose in your heart, don't do it. Don't do things because everybody is doing it. Don't build because everybody is building. Don't do things because they are on fashion or they are the fashionable things to do. No, 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 no. Accuracy will save you. You will find yourself with giants that you are unable to handle. Do you know why? Let me say this. Do you know why? Do you know one of the reasons why there is wickedness in the ark is because some of these arcs that we are building has, has, has no measurement and has no specific so the people who cause wickedness in the outside world have now come in and they are wreaking havoc within the ark. Accuracy will save you and the ark. Accuracy will save you and the people you are leading. When wrong people start to walk in, ask yourself this question. How did they find it easy to enter? Because if you are a giant, you will not be able to fit into that ark if the measurement excludes you. 
When God gives out a measurement, do it exactly like that. It will save you. I'm done. In the precious name of Jesus. I want to say this again, friends, that there is safety in building what God wants you to build and do it in that exact way. The how part and the what part. But what matters most is don't do it anyhow you feel. Do it as the scripture dictates. Do it as the revelation of God in your heart dictates. It will save you from giants. It will save you from giants you can't handle. Some giants must be handled elsewhere by other gifts. And you might find yourself without the gift, the gift to handle them. So you might find yourself with, with, with unnecessary problems that you have created by your inaccuracies. May the Lord help you. We are done day one of our online Passover conference in the precious name of Jesus. The beginning of our walk and relationship with God start with Jesus. Don't preach Jesus. Don't preach kingdom. Don't preach kingdom if you are not prepared to teach Jesus as the door of that kingdom. Jesus is the beginning of it all. When we start to walk with God, we need to start by receiving Jesus as our personal Savior. That is the day one of our conference. Tomorrow, we enter into day two. Until Sunday, we are having Passover conference here, live right here on Facebook. I love you. God bless you. And my encouragement to you is this, friends, is that digest these messages quickly because we'll be bringing in more and more and more and more. Now, if you are not catching up in terms of speed, in terms of, um, 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 uh, you know, in terms of uh, uh, what needs to, what, what, in terms of digesting these teachings quickly, you'll find yourself with a pile and pile and pile of teachings that has not been processed. So, we've got seven days to push this conference, our online conference. We are going to spend this conference talking about the blood. We'll talk about kingdom principles. you talk about, we'll bring in different dimensions of God and different aspects of our work with God and I pray that this becomes you know as much as we're not gathering you know in a building but wherever we are online I pray that this becomes one of the best Passovers we have ever had you know as believers I love you so very much God bless you and I'll see you tomorrow morning 10 o'clock when we do our day session for tomorrow uh, invite your friends get you know data and ensure that you are covered and you are prepared for what is coming there's more that is coming in the precious name of Jesus. God bless you. I love you.